And now our original series project home. Could RVs be a new temporary fix for California's growing homeless crisis? Tonight, a local nonprofit confirms in rare cases it does provide RVs for people living on the streets. In tonight's project home, KPIX 5's Susie Steimel shows us the controversial solution that's left some empty handed. Depending on how you look at it, the way Kimberly Hunter Wilson and her husband Peter are living is either an impressive display of human ingenuity or downright depressing. It's home. That's, I mean, you know, it's as close to home as, you know, a front and a back door as we're going to get right now. This creative collection of tents comes complete with a kitchen, pantry, a functioning shower, and even cable that goes in and out with each passing BART train. Their makeshift home is the envy of their homeless encampment on 77th Street. Everybody say, ain't you guys supposed to be moving? Oh, I want to get your place when you move. Because in July, someone offered a way out. We were introduced to Cornelia Banks. Cornelia Banks, a residential counselor for Bay Area Community Services, or BACS, told Kimberly and Pete about a new option for them, trailers as permanent housing. What kind of a difference would that make in your life? It'll be a, a total turnaround for us. We've never been homeless before, and we're going on two years in January, and it's hard. Kimberly and Pete say they were given the option of an RV or a modular home. They chose the modular home. In a series of text messages, Cornelia tells Kimberly, I'm going to text you some places I want you to pick up applications for. Kimberly, okie dokie. Next came addresses for modular homes in Stockton and Lodi. The price tag, $30,000 that BACS would supposedly pay. Kimberly filled out applications for several. She took BART to meet her mother to tour each place. Said she was elated. Finally, someone was going to pull her and Pete off the street. But then in October, Cornelia just stopped responding. All I want to know is what's going on. What do we need to do? What can we do, you know, to to get it moving again. It sounded cool, so... Joseph you know. Jones had better luck at first. A few months after his probation officer found him a bed at the Bax Run Holland Navigation Center in Oakland, he says a Bax counselor there gave him hopeful news. They could offer him permanent placement in an RV. He says he was given a list of RVs to check out and picked this 1986 Dolphin motorhome. It was 6000 My case manager went with me to go look at it once and we came back and we bought it. But, you know, nothing was evaluated on the... Um, because I, I, it's my first car. First of all, I miss an RV. I don't even know nothing about RVs. The Alameda County Probation Department confirms that Bax placed Joe in the RV without the agency's consent. Joe says it didn't take long to realize there were some serious problems. The electricity didn't work. The heater didn't work. Um, it was water damage in the top bed. Then came engine troubles. Finally, his RV broke down in downtown Oakland. He says he tried to get Bax to help with repairs, but... They didn't move a finger. With the way they would say it, um, how I moved into it was uh, successfully transitioned into the, um, out of Bax into um, something they was offering. It has been collecting tickets on the street ever since. Man, like over $1,000. I have to ask about the RV program. Is that still going on? Which RV program? In a previous interview, back CEO Jamie Almanza denied the existence of an RV or trailer or modular home program. Oh, Bax does not buy RVs as a program program model. But she did confirm an unnamed donor did buy RVs for a few clients. So the donor, this lovely donor, um, raised money to donate to trailers, uh, to get the uh, terminology right, um, to Bax to house two families, yes. And they were housed in trailers by Bax. Yes, the donor gave us the RVs. Bax now confirms that four of its clients have been permanently placed in RVs, but it won't say whether Joe is one of them. Citing privacy concerns, the company tells us it can't tell us anything about its clients, but Bax did say that everything that Kimberly, Pete, and Joe told us is not true. Meanwhile, thanks to his probation officer, Joe has since found shelter in a group home in San Leandro. As for Kimberly and Pete, they're still out on the street, waiting. I don't get angry, but I have so much anger right now that this lady got had us so pumped up. We just tired. We're tired. We're senior citizens. It's cold, and 
I'm really disappointed. In a late email tonight, a Bax representative says in unique situations, housing solutions may or may not include a trailer, and that when a client is not willing to go into shared housing, he or she may be willing to live in an RV parked at a house. As for Kimberly, she says she did recently hear from Cornelia confirming that she will not be getting that modular home. It demonstrates how tough a situation this is, you know. It is, and it's heartbreaking to, to see people in these situations. How do these companies or these organizations that have access to these RVs just parked randomly throughout the Bay Area? A lot of times they're not supposed to be parked there. Well, and that's sort of the big question mark with this story and why we were interested in it. Bax will say these were donated and that they were supposed to be parked in a specific space. Obviously, with Joe, that's not what happened, so mm -hmm. that's the big question here. No. All, right. All right, Susie, thank you.